I request your attention to the recitation of the Holy Quran. Honorable speaker, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and salamun alaikum. I, Bakhtavir Iftakhar, on behalf of President Gas, Air Marshal Faris Hussain Khan, formally welcome you all to today's event. The guest lecture is titled From Crisis to Opportunity, Harnessing Climate Change for Pakistan's Sustainable Future. We shall first see a brief introductory video showcasing the scope of Gas's activities and a message from President Gas.
Ladies and gentlemen, our distinguished guest speaker today is Dr. Adil Najam, who is a leading public scholar whose teaching, research, and public engagement focuses on issues of global public policy, especially those related to conservation, environment, sustainable and human development, and climate change in the global south. He has recently been appointed as president of the World Wildlife Fund International. He is also the inaugural dean emeritus at the Frederick S. Pardee School of Global Studies at Boston University and a professor of international relations and of earth and environment. Dr. Najam previously served as vice chancellor of the Lahore University of Management Sciences. He has also been the director of the Boston University Pardee Center for the Study of the Longer Range Future. He has also taught at MIT and the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, Tufts University. Professor Najam was a co-author for the third and fourth assessments of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, work for which the scientific panel was awarded the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize for advancing the public understanding of climate change science. He has written over a hundred scholarly papers and book chapters. His recent work includes the Pakistan National Human Development Report on Youth and the Living Indus Initiative. He has served on multiple boards, including as chair of the Luke Hoffman Institute and South Asian Network of Development and Environment Economics. He has frequently served as advisor to international organizations, NGOs, and governments across the world. In 2010, he was awarded Sitara Imtiaz by the President of Pakistan. It is an honor to have you here at CASA. I would now call upon the moderator, Air Marshal Mohammed Ashfaq Arai, advisor at CAS, to take over today's proceedings. Over to you, sir. Dr. Adil Hajan, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'll take this opportunity to once again welcome you on behalf of Team Cash and President Cash. I'll start uh, with a tweet from our young researchers, Ms. Shaza, yesterday. In her tweet, she wrote, we are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation who can do something about it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, climate change is pressing global issue with far reaching impacts on the environment and human societies. According to the Global Climate Risk Index 2021, Pakistan is ranked the eighth most vulnerable country despite its low carbon emissions of less than 1%. Pakistan's vulnerability is driven by its geographic location, socio-economic conditions, and institutional capacity. The country is home to nearly 7,000 glaciers, which cover over about 13% of its land mass. Since 1997, melting glaciers, because of high temperatures, have caused ice mass reduction by 36%. This is leading to devastating consequences, including floods and landslides, reduced wa water availability, and loss of biodiversity and ecosystem services. Temperatures rise is also altering precipitation patterns, leading to irregular rainfall, which impacts agriculture, accessibility to water, and intensifies the possibility of flooding as well as drought events. Moreover, Pakistan's coastal regions are extremely susceptible to sea level rise, storm surges, and erosion. The increased water levels threaten human settlements, fisheries, and ecosystems, while worsening financial difficulties and food insecurity for all those localities. These pressing challenges pose significant threats to Pakistan's economy, energy supply, food security, water availability, and the well-being of millions of individuals, 
thereby impacting every facet of human and national security. The challenges are further aggravated by a lack of awareness, public indifference, non-implementation of rules and procedures, and poor governance. The gravity of the situation necessitates urgent attention and the formulation of a comprehensive plan for adaptation and mitigation. Swift action is imperative to address these issues effectively and safeguard the nation's socio-economic stability, environmental sustainability, and the overall welfare of its populace. This requires finding uh, solutions to some of the questions such as how can Pakistan address its environmental challenges and check out, uh, chalk out implementation strategies to mitigate and adapt to the growing impact of climate change? What opportunities does the Green Alliance with the United States holds for the country? How can Pakistan take a leading role in shaping the climate discussion among nations in the global south? Do debt for nature swaps have the potential to alleviate Pakistan's economic and environmental duress? How can emerging technologies be leveraged to enhance protective and corrective measures in combating climate change? Today, we are fortunate to have with us a renowned scholar, Dr. Adil Najam, who has extensive expertise in climate change and related subjects. He brings a wealth of experience gained through practical work, teaching, and scholarly contributions. He understands Pakistan's educational standards, the public attitude towards collective issues, lack of awareness at all levels, the governance system, absence of long-term planning, and ambiguity between authority and responsibility. Therefore, we expect that his recommendations would include something out of the box applicable in Pakistan's special situation. And this brings back to the tweet, the younger generation is realizing, but the decision making is with the older generation. And that is probably the unfortunate part. So I'll not take more time. Dr. Adil Najam, stage is yours. Uh, it's, a, it's a great honor and, and pleasure and delight to be here. Like, and I, I should say, I was saying to the, the president, who as I was walking in, those posters with my photograph, then I come into this room and I see Jilani Saab and all wonderful people that, that I, have, I have known and respected for so long, and that puts even more pressure. So, uh, so the pressure is on, but I am delighted, delighted to be here. Um, let me see if this will work. I hope it should. Um, as I said, gee, uh, by the way, a special thank to the young lady who read out my bio. Bhojshukriya, thank you very much uh, for embarrassing me. Uh, as as you can see, my greatest skill in life is writing my own CV. Uh, <laughs> but just go up, introduce Karinthi. That person must be very interesting. Uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you for, for having me. Uh, I want to take the, uh, the next um, half an hour, maybe 40 minutes, to introduce some ideas. There's a number of friends here uh, who have heard me speak on some of these issues. Um, I will try not to repeat too much of that uh, because I, I actually, this is an experiment for me. I want to learn from you and I want to learn from that conversation. So I hope I'm amongst friends because I will make the mistake of trespassing into your territory. Uh, and I want to use this to help myself think more about the climate security link. Um, I have worked on it for quite a while. In 2001, I was the first book I published on uh, security, environment, and development. Um, and I'll, I'll put at least something from that. I've been trying to think and write about that uh, for many years. Many people have. Many Many people have. I was, it was wonderful to see your video, maybe climate is one of those areas. But one of the questions, and I'm saying this before I start, um, is, Sangha uh, Manusha, I didn't see you earlier, is really, what is that link? Right? It's one thing to just link everything with security because it gets more attention. Uh, but given the audience and given the place and given the room, 
um, I want to I, I want to do that, and that might mean that I will say things that may not be uh, you may not agree with or may not find convincing. If so, please let me know because that will make me me smart. So that's really uh, what I want to do. Thank you also for the mention to the uh, WWF, uh, which is I'm now 11 years old in that 11 days old uh, in, in, in that position. And you will see I've purposely not put that as one of my affiliations. I have put the uh, Jenna Center uh, because I'm speaking not, not really as WWF, but, uh, but, but as a Pakistani uh, tr trying to think about, uh, about these things. I want to raise three things. I want to raise three questions. I nearly always start with three questions. The questions are different. Like, questions are much more important than answers. Answers to koi bhi la sakta. Uh, I, I do not know of any great idea that did not start with a good question. Uh, the, the greatness is always in coming up with the question that changes the, the way we think, and therefore the answer, answer this is. Um, three questions. The first one is, what is the climate telling us? Right? Like that quote from uh, the young person quoting um, Secretary General who originally said that, uh, you know, what is the climate telling us? Not what climate scientists are telling us. Right? As I mentioned, I worked on the IPCC. I've spent my life doing this. But when we look at the ke baad dekhte hain, what is the objective reality telling us? Right? Not what politicians are telling us, not what scientists, the future projections are telling us, not what uh, uh, newspapers are telling us, but what is the actual climate telling us? And there's a reason why I want to tell the story like this, because I have been arguing, and you will see this, that we are now in what I call the age of adaptation. And I'll come to that, but what is the climate telling us? Right? In a way, may I be thoda sa apko de tum. Uh, climate ne pishle hafte, what did the climate tell us last week? L last week was very, very interesting. The world record on the highest global temperature for one day, not in one place, for the, but for the world as a whole, was broken four times. Sunday till then was the highest recorded global temperature for the world, right? Not in a place. Sunday, dunya mein, pishla Sunday tha. Monday, that was broken. Tuesday, so, so, Tuesday was equaled Monday and Wednesday it was broken again. By Thursday, I stopped noticing. <laughs> the pattern ban gaya. I can promise you this summer it will be broken multiple times. Now, again, part of that, the signs for climate people here, there is something called El Nino. We are going through an El Nino cycle. El Nino cycles happen. El Nino cycles push uh, average temperatures higher. Can, if climate is already pushing that higher, Right? That's the part key, how much of this is not natural and how much of this is man-made. If climate has already pushed it higher and now El Nino comes, it goes higher. Right? So what is the climate telling us? I've spent too much time on that, but that's question one. Question two is what I introduced. What does it mean to live in the age of adaptation? I'll, I'll, I'll again, because there may not all be subject specialists here, in climate uh, science, there are two essential terms. Uh, in climate treaties, in climate negotiation, in climate policy, basically we've broken it up into two things. One is called mitigation, one is called adaptation. Simple idea. Mitigation is what do you do to keep the problem from happening? Right? You can apply it to anything, politics, whatever. What do you do so that the problem does not happen? Right? Adaptation is if the problem does happen, how do you adapt to it? So till now, from 1992, Rio Earth Summit, uh, Jim Marker Saab, and so on and so forth, the politics of climate change has essentially been and remains a politics of mitigation. Mitigation means what can we do to make this problem? What can we do is essentially very simple. It is carbon. There is one box in the periodic table. It is called C. Carbon emissions. That's why everything you, you hear about climate is about emission. Emission come karna. Air condition emission come karna. Heating emission come karna. Energy come use karna. So as long as you are talking about carbon mitigation, you are essentially talking about energy. Right? Because that's the basic place which has changed the world. We have this wonder drug called fossil fuels. Right? It's one of the most amazing things that happened. 
because an energy source came that was easy to transport. It could be, uh, you know, hydrocarbons could be liquid, could be solid, could be gas. They're easy to use. They can be used in every way for about 120 years. We had this super material called hydrocarbons. But one of the results of that is carbon emissions. So mitigation is how do you reduce your emissions? Because that is changing the world climate. Now, because we have failed in the negotiation part, right? the next COP will be COP28. What that means is this will be 28th consecutive year, quarter century se zada ho gaya, okay, we have chosen not to come to a treaty. Right? Sorry, Jalain sir, but we can talk about that. That's, that's essentially the North-South game. We mela a every year, we go there, we say what we, they know we will say, they say what we know they will say. We come back with a little lollipop, ye wala fund, wo wala fund, and we keep going. <laughs> I'm, I hope I have more explanations. So that's mitigation. Adaptation is, ki yaar, if the thing actually starts happening, what do we do? Right? Jab climate change hoti hai, when the flood hits. So now you get a 2010. Now you get a 2022. Then how do you adapt? The good news on adaptation and the age of adaptation is that we as a species are very good at adaptation. In fact, the reason we are sitting here so comfortably amongst other species is because one of our superpowers as human beings is the ability to adapt, which other species don't have as much. All species adapt. Right? So, rains, I get an umbrella. Adaptation. Suddenly it gets cold, I wear a sweater. Adaptation, right? So we are good at adapting to new situations, finding solutions. The problem with adaptation and the politics of adaptation, therefore, is that adaptation always has a cost. The umbrella, uski koi price hogi. The sweater, uski koi price hogi. Pakki chhat, uski koi price hogi. Right? That, in a nutshell, is all the politics of climate change. If you are a vulnerable country that hasn't given done much emissions, you say ki yaar emission to maine ki nahi aur adaptation ki cost meri. Therefore you who have done it pay. If you are a emitting country, you say you don't say it but you keep quiet but you say let me just make my own city more livable. Because my first responsibility is to my people. Right? And that is this net zero wali business that's now happening. That is, in a nutshell, the politics of adaptation and mitigation. And what I'm arguing, I'm sorry, I've taken too much time on this slide. What does it mean to live in what I have been calling and writing about the age of adaptation? That countries like Pakistan, to me, should be thinking about adaptation. Because you don't cut your nose to spite your face. Kia jisne marzi hai. Ghar mere bande ka bana hai. flood aana. At that point, you don't say that carbon is right? And finally, this question, is climate changing, uh, does this mean, what does this mean for our meaning of secure and insecure? Security is killing. I haven't put it here, but the real question is, a lot of people are, have been very concerned. It's nearly now a certainty to link climate and security. What is not a certainty is, we are still trying to struggle, ki, struggle ki hai what is the link? If everything is security, then nothing is security. Right? So one reason why people want to link their issue to security is there's this assumption that security has money. So if I can make my issue a security issue, my issue will also get some resources. So clearly, everything cannot be security. And I am hoping we can think together, okay, when does an issue become a security issue? I want to challenge also the idea that security is also not just because it is military related or it is war related. Right? That we know historically that security is more than war. Right? War is the ultimate failure of security. Also the ultimate failure of diplomacy. But there are multiple things that are security issues and we want to understand that and, and my, what I'm trying to put there not as a new thing is, is, is but, but this idea that we should be thinking about not just security, we should be thinking about insecurity. One of the things I've learned in life is that actually security only becomes important when you are insecure. 
secure people and secure countries nearly never talk about security i saw this in the financial crisis in the us thakar ke crisis aayi now everyone is thinking about security i saw this in covid suddenly now it's security right when people feel threatened that is why actually countries like us think more about security because security thinking about security is a factor of how insecure you are which is why you have to bolster your defenses to to meet it anyhow i'm sorry many professors these other jhad diye i'll i'll try to try to try to tone it down here but i wanted to in this audience i really wanted to spend time on those questions because they are there for a reason not not anyhow i have a proposition the proposition essentially is that in the age of adaptation it is fundamentally changes the nature of climate policy as well as politics it invites us to reconsider how we conceptualize the two that is too many words to ever put on one screen so let me highlight what i'm saying first i'm saying there's a fundamental change change mesha hoti hai change change is not unusual change is a static in life but certain periods in life are fundamentally and structurally changing i have a different presentation i'll be giving later this week which is on 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 global disorder i essentially argue that we are living through a time of fundamental change change is always happening change is not a big thing but there are certain times that fundamentally change fundamental ka kya matlab hai fundamental ka matlab hai not only that thing changes but other things change because of it structural ka kya matlab hai ki that it has to be a change which changes the structures of decision making and action and what we are seeing now is not simply ki power ye upar hogi niche hogi it is bit between technology between climate between geopolitics we are seeing a fundamental redrafting and when you have a fundamental redrafting the issue is that you don't know how it will be redrafted right so the past is not a good indicator of the future in times of structural and fundamental change so my first point is that it is fundamental the second is that it changes both policy and politics i have already said something about it so let me not go point to it and finally i invite us to reconsider this meaning of conceptualizing climate and 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 security and again i i do this hoping i am among friends and you will you will forgive me for saying things that 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 may not be um, entirely polite let me start with paris right uh meri wali jo kabila hai usme paris ka matlab is 2015 the paris conference <laughs> paris ka matlab badi thi jo thi but you've heard a lot about paris uh, paris was this major conference out of that came the so called paris agreement which is a wonderful document because it's not an agreement it's not a treaty it has zero not one implementable legal requirement right that was mostly because john kerry representing the us said ke har congress will never accept anything so it is essentially a set of ideas that country said we will try our best to do but it is significant uh, i should tell this uh, especially for some of the folks who are here i am a creature of the cops the climate uh, negotiation process uh, the conference of the parties uh, i was at cop minus 2 cop minus 1 cop 0 when they were not called cops uh, this was 91 91 90 uh and 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 then um um uh, had the great pleasure of spending time with uh, Dimshed Marker who was our ambassador and the head of the G77 at the Rio Earth Summit so i was at every cop from before there was a cop until copenhagen copenhagen you would remember is the one that everyone said was a great failure i think it was the best cop ever because the countries actually tried they tried and failed but they tried but anyhow at that point i put an embargo on myself no more cops in paris i broke the embargo on the request of our then prime minister attended in 15 minutes i realized i shouldn't have and and put the embargo back again two things came out of paris right i i don't need to go into the treaty but there are two things that came out that you would recall lambasa document that 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 was negotiated two numbers came out pehla number was this I used to have a lot of fun with this slide because I used to ask what is that number and most people would start to cipher count karte the ki kitni hai because we haven't seen a note of that that magnitude that's 100 billion dollars the thing to tell you about this number was so this was the number that was agreed that this would be spent per year by the last year uh, on climate mitigation and adaptation in developing countries now everyone knew at that point ki hoga nahi these are aspirations and in a way the number is spent but it is spent by the farmer jiska ghar bagya tha 
बिकॉज उसने तो घर बनाना है ना दे नॉट गोइंग टू वेट फॉर मनी टू कम इन मेरा घर बह गया वट डू आई डू वट आई डू इज आई रीबिल्ड माई हाउस आई टेक द मनी आई वॉज सेविंग फॉर माई डॉटर वेटिंग और आई टेक माई दो वेशी एंड सेल दैम एंड आई रीबिल्ड बिकॉज आई कैन जस्ट सिट देर वेटिंग फॉर द इंटरनेशनल सिस्टम टू गिव मी एनी थिंग एंड दैट इज वाई फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस ईयर यू आर सींग एन अपटेक इन जी डी पी दिस इज नेचुरल आफ्टर एवरी डिजास्टर जी डी पी विल गो आउट उसमें कोई मैजिक नहीं है जी डी पी इज असेंशली हाउ मच मनी इज स्पेंट इन एन इकोनॉमी आफ्टर डिजास्टर इन वेरियबली मोर मनी हैज टू बी स्पेंट यू सो दैट आफ्टर कोविड सो दैट आफ्टर अर्थ को एक्स यू सी दैट एंड सो ऑन सो फॉर बिकॉज पीपल विल स्पेंड मनी सो जी डी पी डजेंट डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन गुड स्पेंडिंग एंड बैड स्पेंडिंग यू स्पेंड ऑन हेरोइन और यू स्पेंड ऑन 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 चैरिटी बोथ आर काउंटेड द सेम वे सो दैट वॉज हंड्रेड थाउजेंड हंड्रेड बिलियन द स्टोरी ऑफ दिस नंबर नाउ इज कि वॉट लुक लाइक अ वेरी बिग नंबर now looks like an amazingly small number right the, the, i've been using this slide for many years and it used to the room used to say wow ye to itne paise kabhi bhi nahi aayenge now my climate people look at this and say isse kya hoga <laughs> so the cost of the pakistan flood alone which wasn't just because of climate like let's use that the most conservative estimate is 32 billion The World Bank's estimate was something like 60 billion, right? Yeah, 100 billion. But let me try to put this number in context of security, right? This is the. Ab me, I will start losing friends. Cost of Afghanistan war to the U.S. Anyone? Two. Two trillion. Bada number hai, chota number. Bahut hi affordable number hai. Matha ja number hai. Iske to multi trillion chahiye. Sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you why. cost of covid not cost to economy actual money printed and doled out i live in the us it took the us congress 9 days 9 days to invent a trillion dollars 5 days to spend it sirf 9 din ki bahas ke baad a trillion dollars were printed in 5 days unhone kaha ji kharch ho gaye sare because those checks were written out by the end of covid the new money printed just because of covid is 6.25 trillion that's why i compared it to afghanistan the point i'm making is not i'm not trying to score points here america pay or whatever i'm saying that when issues are actual security issues the number game changes in fact i was here is my proposition a security issue is defined as an issue which is existential and because it is existential the question of cost becomes irrelevant security pe paise isliye nahi kharch hote ki wo ki wo security hai wo isliye hote hain ki assumption is ki ye masla jo hai meri baka ka it is existential and because it is existential phir paise puchne ka koi fayda nahi hai first you save your life then you figure out how to pay for it right that is why covid mein panch din mein पैसे खर्च हुए नौ दिन में पैसे आए नॉट जस्ट कोविड द फाइनेंशियल क्राइसिस आई वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट 4.5 ट्रिलियन राइट सो ऑल अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड व्हेन सोसाइटीज एक्चुअली बिलीव दैट समथिंग इज एक्चुअली थ्रेटनिंग देम देयर एग्जिस्टेंस एंड दिस दिस हलसब इज वेरी लॉजिकल अगर मेरे बच्चा कल बीमार हो जाए माय फर्स्ट थिंग इज आई एम गोइंग टू डू एवरीथिंग टू सेव माय चाइल्ड उसके बाद आई विल आस्क के पैसे कितने लगे और मुझे क्या बेचना पड़ेगा Right? that to me is the lever of when you are have a security issue or not and covid really was a security issue aapne covid mein jitni impossibilities ki hain you know things that have were impossible for covid suddenly in one day became possible main aapse kahun ki yaar kal 3 din ke liye sari airport duniya ko band kar de impossible okay right germany is saying to italy main aapko mask nahi dunga eu or no eu right airports closed no one on the road literally aapne you know kisi ke kareeb nahi jana mere kareeb kisi ne nahi aana now again i'm not trying to be facetious what i'm saying is security issues are security issues for a reason and we need to go to that bottom line reason ke what makes a security issue and why we treat security issues differently and the essential argument is because there is existential you the social contract is you say to society ke dekho agar ye kaam nahi hua then everything else will fail right 
Again, I'm taking too long, but the argument on climate and security is that there are some aspects of climate that are existential. And that is why they need a security approach. Right? So that was number one. I need to cut myself down. The other number that came out of Paris is more important. And that were these two numbers, 1.5 and 2. You've probably heard them. Basically, the climate people wanted 2 degree. Let's do policies so that we don't cross the 2 degree barrier. A number of small countries or vulnerable countries, Pakistan was not amongst them, but the small island states, Bangladesh, they said, ki, yaar, 1. 2 is too late. If the world temperature changes by 1.5, we, we have an existential threat. Right? My, 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 fam my most favorite example is Van Vanuatu. So I don't know how many of you study Vanuatu. Vanuatu is one of the small island states in the South Pacific. Jahaz aata hai, population bad jati hai. Jahaz jata hai, population kam ho jati hai. Itna chota sa hai. Itna bhi chota nahi hai, lekin chota hai. Vanuatu has now a treaty with New Zealand, formal treaty with New Zealand, that in the event of climate change impacting the island, meaning it goes down, sea level rise, ki se, all of the population of Vanuatu will move to New Zealand. The problem is that Bangladesh's population will go down. And Pakistan will go down. So that's, that's existential. That's literally existential. So, Small countries said, Ki ji, we can't do 2, 2 is too late, we must do 1.5. So the treaty says we will, we, will, we will aim for 2 and try for 1.5. At this point, and I'm very sad to say this, there is no science in the world. I, I wish I was wrong. I will give anything in my life to be wrong on this. I know of no actual science that can show me a path from here to below 1.5. That, that is why we are in the age of adaptation. That is why while we continue thinking about mitigation, we have to start thinking about adaptation. Let me, let me suggest why that is so. Let me suggest why we are in the, the age of adaptation by saying, would you make a clear question? Remember 2020? I, I don't know how many of you have but I spent most of it writing memos that started with this is a year like no other. Uh, thank you for doing this. Very difficult. Flana, flana. In 2020, two diseases hit the world. One was COVID. The other was? Zoom. Zoom was a big disease. My only good thing that came out of Zoom is you can put these backgrounds around you. So that is me. In 2020, teaching my class on sustainable development, the background tells you what I was teaching, but that's not what I'm saying. Let me tell you what else was happening in 2020. Right? So while we were talking about this, very much like now, in January 2020, hottest January ever recorded since we've been recording temperatures. February, second hottest ever. March, second hottest ever. April, second hottest ever since when we have count karna shuru kiya. So this is for the globe as a whole, not a place, right? May, hottest ever. June, hottest ever. July, second hottest. August, second hottest. September, hottest. October, hottest. You get the point, right? December, the third respite will get eighth hottest. This is what I'm saying. Let's listen to what the climate is saying. The climate is saying, it's already happening. Climate change is no longer a future issue. Let me put, I think, this is a tweet from April of 22. Last year, on 29th of April, I, I tweeted, I calculated nearly a billion people, one billion people on that day across South Asia only were seeing temperatures of over 100 degree Fahrenheit, meaning in most cases, many cases, 117 Fahrenheit. It is not that we can't do 100 South Asian, we can do it in the But not on April 29, not for a billion people. Right? Um, I was just hearing about olive growing in Pakistan. Uh, we don't know what happens at this, that, 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 that place. Right? The farmer has to, the, if you have a science, there is a database of data in which it is based on that I have to grow this time, I have to grow this time. When that goes berserk, that is as bad as the flood. 
for the livelihood of that person, right? So that is what I'm saying. Okay, climate is no longer a future issue. Climate is telling us this is happening now. Now you might say, "Nay, Professor Sir, this is not on the table. Let me put some numbers. I put again another embargo. I put on myself was that I will stop using graphs in the future. Um, climate wale, we always use these graphs: 2050, 2100, 2150. What I realized that by doing that, we are telling people that we have time. So now I nearly always only use graphs in the past. Not what kya hoega kya, lekin hua kya. Let me show you. This is actual global temperature since we have been recording temperature. I hope people can see those lines. That is the 1.5 I was talking about, and then there is two. Right? And again, ye wo nahi hai ki kya hoga. This is what has actually been having happening: 81, 97, 2001, 2014. Right? It stops at 2016. This year was the first time when we started touching 1.5. उसका ये मतलब नहीं है 1.5 हो गया क्योंकि वो एवरेज वाला चक्कर है. But the result is sort of in front of us. Now you may again say कि जी that is fine, that is global temperature. Global temperature तो मैंने नहीं देखा मैं तो इस्लामबाद में हूँ. So let us look what's happening in place. You can choose whichever place you want. I've put the same data on a map. Ever since we have data for any place, this map tells you what is happening to the increase. right you can choose wherever you want to see and this will also tell you the emerging politics of climate change the real north south issue will also be seen like in again what it says is that climate is no longer a future issue climate is happening now now not all of this may be climate there is el nino there is so on so forth but what is clear in the science is that human induced climate is pushing up the planet right and and this map in some ways tells you about the climate data and the political data in one uh, so that is really why it is a global issue and why this 1.5 number we need to come back to now some of you may be saying again i apologize for speaking long but some of you might be thinking ki yaar theek hai but 0.5 degree to bada chota hota hai right between when you came here this morning and when you will leave i imagine 0.5 degree change ho chuka ho that is true 0.5 degree in weather is insignificant 0.5 degree in climate is consequential weather or climate ka us then i was on this television thing and i was suggesting to them ki we need a better word for climate change in urdu because mausam jo hai wo weather bhi hai aur climate bhi hai but weather and climate are two separate separate things right so especially those of you who are from the air force would know this there is a weather condition which is aaj kya and there is a climate condition which is over time kya right and if you have to be prepared you have to be prepared for four so 0.5 in weather is significant what the, why is it significant by the way those colorful lines is another way of presenting the data i had how the world's weather has changed so this is one of the ipcc reports i also had something to do with the uh, ipcc okay what does 0.5 do between friends right i won't go into all of it like in a 0.5 degree change जो 1.5 और 2.5 का फर्क है एक्सट्रीम हीट गोज अप बाय 260 परसेंट टू इसका मतलब नहीं है टेम्परेचर 260 चला जाता है इसका ये है कि वट एवर चेंज विल हैपन एट टू एट 1.5 पॉइंट फाइव इट विल बी टू पॉइंट सिक्स टाइम्स मोर दैट चेंज राइट स्पीसीज लॉस ट्वाइस एज मच क्रॉप यूल्ड टू पॉइंट थ्री टाइम्स Uh, sometimes back i did a study on pakistan ke uh, lower punjab upper sindh mein cotton or wheat ki crop pe kya farak padta hai uh, with this sort of thing we can talk about that so it is consequential and especially for developing countries that's where the security threats you can look at those numbers and what they mean for countries like our own uh, in thinking about that this is what brings me to this question and now we'll talk about security and then i promise to shut up uh, of the age of adaptation okay, what is the age of adaptation it is here it is now right what does climate mean in the age of adaptation let me first say how we got here i'll only be very quick first i think it's a failure of wisdom there is this argument ki ji science puri nahi it's one of the most facetious argument ever made i think this is an old graph between 1991 and 2012 13950 scientific papers were published on the subject only 24 of them rejected in any way the idea that global warming is human induced this number is even less today right so somehow you know we think ke har cheez ke do side hai har cheez ke do side nahi hote kai cheezon ke sirf ek side hota hai it's called the right side 
बट वेदर यू आर अ जर्नलिस्ट वेदर यू आर अ पॉलिटिशियन यू सम हाउ फील के नीचे दोनों साइड हमने देखने ऑन द साइंस इट इज अबाउट एज क्लियर एज इट इज ऑन ग्रेविटी Right? There is lots of scientific questions, but the original is. I won't go into this. It's also a negotiation failure. My apologies to say this, Jalal Sahib and others, but in fact, we we have turned the climate negotiations into a mela. It is repetitive. People are now already planning for the negotiation five years from now. I yearn for the time when <coughs> international negotiation was. You gave someone a brief. You knew your national interest. Go and sit there until you get an agreement, and then come back. This idea of constant negotiation <coughs> and then the idea ke pura mela uske sath jayega there will be 30000 people there as if international treaty making is a spectator sport if you do that then every politician is playing to the gallery right they're thinking humne aaj tweet kya karna hai all the paraphernalia of serious decision making is taken out of that so it is a negotiation failure uh, five failures as i said of how we get there the third failure is that it's not only uh, those it is a vulnerability failure i won't go into this because you know this you don't need to read the graph this is the countries of the world on the left side is essentially who is hurt by climate kis ka asar kis pe pad raha on the right side where are the emissions coming from so wo jo ashfaq sahab baat kar rahe the na ki the point about sort of who's causing it and 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 who's suffering and that brings you to a moral dimension there's a reason why the next picture you will see is from standards and poor it's a financial agency ke vulnerability or risk kahan hai look at the colors and see ke who is causing versus who is at risk right and finally it is a political failure right and i'm i'm not trying to make a political point i'm not trying to make a political point but it's not a question of science not being there it's a question of pol politics having failed and 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 i know that that picture because it is trump sahab ki you know brings a smile but it's not just trump it's everyone it's 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 everyone it is a political failure this is one of my favorite pictures this is from copenhagen this was i argue the last moment when serious leaders seriously were trying to do something you will see china is not there there is a whole story in barack obama's book of why china is not there लेकिन यूजली हेड्स ऑफ स्टेट डोंट डू दिस एट अ नेगोशिएशन क्योंकि पहले से एग्रीमेंट हो चुकी होती है दे कम फॉर द सॉर्ट ऑफ साइनिंग वगैरह राइट दिस वाज द सीरियसनेस के दिस वाज एट 3 एएम एट नाइट आल्सो राइट सो 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 एंड सो फॉर एंड नाउ वी आर लेस्ट टू वो जो पेरिस वाला है यू नो दिस वाज बिफोर द ग्लासगो के वी विल मेक अ विश राइट सो सो इट इज अ फेलियर ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स माय अपॉलॉजीज फॉर द टाइम बट लेट मी लेट मी एंड विद जस्ट अ फ्यू वेरी क्विक स्लाइड्स i will take a few minutes not to many many and then 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 promise to shut up so what happens what is the future shock security i would argue and this is from the book i had mentioned that i had written uh, we need to sort of <coughs> think about climate in security terms but not all climate is security in a way in the book i have this framework okay? security is about two things security is about what is the source of insecurity why am i insecure kisi ne mujhe mara मैं इनसिक्योर हो गया लेकिन मे बी इट इज ऑल्सो सोशल डिसप्शन नो वन हिट्स मी फिजिकली बट कंडीशन आर क्रिएटेड दैट मेक्स मी इनसिक्योर राइट सो वन डायमेंशन इज सोर्स द अदर डायमेंशन इज 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 अ स्केल फ्रॉम स्टेट बेस्ड टू सोसाइटी बेस्ड राइट अगेन वेरी ब्रीफली आई आई जस्ट पुट द फोर बाय फोर दैट माई बुक वॉज बेस्ड ऑन इफ यू थिंक अबाउट स्टेट एंड वायलेंस राइट सिक्योरिटी इज स्टेट लेवल वायलेंस दैट इज वॉट वॉर इज सो वॉर इज क्लियरली and in security problem right i don't need to convince any one of that but we also know that we have now lived for nearly half a century where more people have died in civil strife violence but at a society level not a state level and that is also clearly about insecurity right so coming from insecurity to me what is interesting is not ki wo pehle wale nahi hai but on the right side of this diagram social disruption at state level leads to insecurity there is a reason many us bachi ki tasveer lagayi hai with load shedding load shedding creates actual insecurity for photoshop copy ki dukan wale ke liye uski livelihood change ho rahi hai na usne ya zyada paise lagane hai ya kam paise banane or and so on so forth and finally what dr mehboob ul haq would always say the human security aspect which is social disruption at society level so the point is not ki security ye sirf hai upar wali point is ki security is also the upper wala war for climate is unlikely civil strife for climate you are already seeing right paul collier says ki jo aapki uh, rwanda wali uh, genocide ki movement thi at least part of it 
was 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 movement because of water and 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 resources i'll i'll show you something on that in a minute institutional failure mere khayal mein to aa chuka hai as 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 with that let me because of time rush through these last ones i'm sorry is ki thodi si off ho gayi should be nature at the bottom but when we think of climate and 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 security uh, climate and adaptation one of the things we should think about is nature right and when we think about nature and climate we usually think wo jo polar bear hota hai ice slab pe and i always say ki yaar wo that's the wrong picture it gives you the sense as if nature is waiting ke aap aake usko bacha lenge maine polar bear se baat ki hai char paanch se they are not waiting unko koi itbar nahi hai nature hits back that's what nature does hamari tarah mujhe koi mare to main ekdam wapas marta hu and that is what nature does ecosystems hit back and therefore the better picture of climate and security is this guy i'm sorry wo uski wo alignment galat ho gayi that's the dengue mosquito there is a reason why dengue is moving northwards both in the mediterranean and here in south asia now partly because we travel hum jute ke saath leke jate hain pathogens and so on so forth but the mosquito is also adapting right so vector borne disease and the movement of vector borne disease becomes becomes a major thing uh, my most important issue for climate and and adaptation uh, is water i would argue ke water is to climate uh, water is to adaptation what carbon was to mitigation these are maps that i will show you very quickly that i had made in the 2010 floods the 2022 floods are not actually slightly smaller technically uh, but they are not different Uh, I was in the U.S. trying to raise support for money and so on and so forth, and I was finding it very difficult to explain to people that flood Pakistan means what does it mean? Today, they are looking at us. If you look at the pictures of Spain and Italy, so I put that blue area on a map of Pakistan is the area that was covered by the flood. Right now, this has a. If you are thinking NDM and um, uh, National Disaster Management Authority, if you are thinking relief, that's the area you are working in, right? so that light blue and dark blue ko zara zehn mein rakhiye that squiggle i'll take that squiggle to scale i put it on a map of the us right this was the wow moment for them mai ke yaar mara flood is not ke basement mein pani aa gaya that's the flood from vermont to florida i put it on a map of japan you can't see japan i put it on a map of the europe of europe denmark to france Right? now you have to imagine a world where this is happening in 10 countries if you see your facebook today jaisi pakistan ki tasveeren thi waisi tasveeren aa rahi hain spain se waisi tasveeren aa rahi hain vermont se main is hafte ki baat kar raha hu waisi tasveeren aa rahi hain nepal se waisi tasveeren aa rahi hain india se so to expect ke natural disaster mein baaki sare aake hame paise dena shuru kar denge it's not going to happen right that that's why the thing that was mentioned living in this that i was part of uh, ke we should think our pakistani issue to and start with the indus um, and good news on that yesterday actually this is wwf news uh, we uh, secured uh, grant funding for 78 million dollars for something called recharge pakistan uh, to recharge the aquifers i hope it is also used right uh, but the idea again is if you are dealing with climate then you have to deal with water right because water is the front line issue where this will happen um, if you are talking water you are immediately talking food Right? because what is food except nature's way of transporting water i'll move around energy we all understand but what we don't understand is that the energy problem for climate is not just electric vehicles my point to my colleagues outside in developed countries is ki hamara problem to energy poverty hai right so we have to solve those two problems together cleaner energy but for people who don't have energy whose energy has to grow right and that is where so mujhe pehle problem ki fikr nahi hai that that transition is already happening the price of solars and wind is going down therefore deployment is going up but the new energy security includes the energy poverty of about 2 and a half billion people in the world same with mobility again i won't go into it in detail but mobility is not just tesla the mobility problem for about again a half billion and a half people in the world is moving large numbers of people large number of distances particularly for 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 dignity uh, let me as i wrap up i will uh, go through some of these i'll just put the last two because then i want to take questions heat is a particular problem we are the front line even more than plants of heat when i was growing up karachi had four seasons चार मौसम होते थे अब पांच 
The fifth season is extreme heat. I can tell you when it will come. I will tell you exactly how many people will die. And it is a totally solvable problem. Right? Eight years in a row we have extreme heat. If that's not a security issue, what is? Right? And the answers on this one are simple. It's hydration, pani, and green. Right? Just need to work on the road, you need to work on the road, and you need to because everyone who's dying, the pictures you see, this is for cities in Karachi, that, that, that in Pakistan. I, I won't go into the details, but you can see the direction of the graph in each page. But the point is that the pictures we are seeing, we should not be seeing. These are all pictures from the Pakistan heat wave, above average, easily solvable. And this is, again, if you are interested in security as the security of people, we should not be seeing these pictures. Right? This is... Basically, uh, in the center, may uh, unclaimed bodies that eventually will be put in uh, uh, trenches, because most people who will die in the heat wave will be homeless people or street people, migrants who didn't have to pata pata nahi. Right? Uh, same in refugee. When I talk about the, in 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 uh, in Europe, especially, this is the one that that gets the most attraction. And I point out to them. I, I was giving a talk at the humanitarian summit on the day this great ship happened. So you can imagine that this was biggest on people's mind. But when we think of refugees, we think of things like this or the Greek ship. Right? But when you think of climate migration, it is not just that. It is people losing their livelihood. Yes, the Green Revolution may work up. And therefore, they move out. The best example to me is Sundarband in what was East Pakistan, what is Bangladesh. Sundarband, there's a micro millimeter change in salt water and fresh water. Right? So, a change. Ho gaya. Us change ki wajah se, the Sundarband communities that do shrimp farming can no longer get to the shrimp in the old boat. That makes thousands of young people unemployed. They move to Chittagong, from Chittagong probably to, uh, to India, to Brussels, to wherever. Right? So climate migration is livelihood migration. I'll, I'll put one map again because I have such a great audience. This is a map from Africa. That's the Arlon, that's Guinea. If you see at the bottom, that's why it's called the parrot's beak. Uski parrot ki chon si nazarari. Right? Keep a focus on the date, January 6, 1974. And Guinea likha hua. I will fast forward the map to December 1999. What do you think happened? This is also happened on the Afghanistan-Pakistan border. A war happened. Where did the war happen? The war happened in Sierra Leone. Where did the environmental impact happen? It happened in Guinea because people are smart. They don't want to be in a war. So they move out of it. When they move out of it, there's pressure in this case on the forest, etc. Right? So we have to think about it differently. As I end, right? Does anyone know this picture? It's a beautiful picture. Pakistan is a beautiful country. This is about Atabad Lake. Right? Atabad Lake is beautiful, especially when we have to go to the Instagram. I, I, I hope I'm still amongst friends. I've taken too long, but I hope I'm still there. Till 2010, there was no Atabad Lake. There was no Atabad Lake. There was no Atabad Lake. There's no lake. Right? It's not entirely climate change because this is a glacial fall. Luckily, it didn't happen. But the lake is The question is this. If you have a village in Pakistan and an enemy country takes and the village is no more, would that not be a security issue? And in this case, nature does it, or our actions to nature does it, and our reaction is Instagram ki tasveer lal jaldi se. So that to me is the type of sort of thinking we need to apply to this. Absolute last slide, what do we do? I don't have recommendations, but I do have, and this was presented to the UN, that's why I'm putting this up. Um, of what we might need to do differently. First, we need to move from re reactive posture to preventative posture. Again, as in COVID, right? The science proved that we could have actually solved it for much less if we had acted earlier. This is not a war you prepare for. This is the war you avoid. 
And that is why a disaster relief approach is not the only right approach. We move from maximizing security or only from thinking about maximizing security, which is what essentially the European posture on climate change is. Let us make our cities livable, the 2050 approach, to minimizing insecurity. We move from thinking of development as a problem to thinking of development as a solution. And we move from thinking of national costs, how much will I have to pay to that 100 billion, to thinking about global benefits. I am really, really thankful for the opportunity. I am really sorry for taking much longer than I was supposed to. But uh, thank you for thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. I would now like to invite uh, President Air Marshal Farad Hussein Khan for his closing remarks. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, uh, Dr. Adil Najam. Uh, uh, I really do not have words to thank you for being here with us and sparing your valuable time out of your busy schedule in Pakistan uh, for uh, such an intellectual, uh, rewarding, uh, rich discourse. And of course, the interest was also shown by the audience for the questions that we've had. And uh, the session is such that we keep, in go keep going on and on, but I think we have to stick to the timings to make sure that we absorb what we have listen to. Uh, let me, first of all, uh, please join me in thanking uh, and in congratulating Dr. Adil Najam for making to the top slot in WMF 11 days. We, we, we mentioned this at CAS with a lot of pride that you here with us and uh, we pray your, for your further successes in life. And that would be beneficial not only to Pakistan, but to the globe, I believe so. So a lot of congratulations once again. And I must thank uh, <coughs> the audience, a galaxy of senior officers from Army, Air Force, and, and civil. And, but my special thanks that I call of CAS has started uh, uh, getting response from the universities. So today we have uh, students from universities. The idea is the, the tweet that uh, A. Marshall Ashfaq was mentioning that, you know, we pass this message on to the young generation. I don't know how much effect can it regenerate the people above 60s, but this young lord that is sitting at the back, I'm sure would listen to it and carry the message forward that they have to do, do probably more. The future generation has more load on their shoulders in Pakistan particularly. So we have them with us and thank you very much for coming. They are students from NDU and they are students from other universities also. Uh, getting back to uh, your subject, I don't think I am concluding anything, okay? So pardon me if I make a mistake, but I think the lesson is very clear. One, climate change is here, it is not tomorrow. It is here, if you don't realize, we're going to lag behind. We've got to realize it is here. While we may not be able to make anything to the effects that 99% is not ours doing. It is 1% that you're probably contributing towards the environment. But we have to prepare to face the effects of the entire thing that comes on us. It's not a choice. It's a compulsion. And uh, the way forward, uh, there is always a way forward in the worst situation. While we faced the entire thing, we saw it. Uh, we faced it uh, in Sin, uh, or in fact other portions of uh, Pakistan also in the last devastating floods, $32 billion of losses. But there is one area that we still, God forbid, doesn't happen. Uh, sea is also susceptible to climate change. We haven't had a disaster coming from sea. If it comes, it will be even bigger than what we had last time. So therefore, Pakistan as a country has to think ahead. Climate change has to be a discussion, 
a future way forward has to be discussed and steps have to be taken. Now, uh, getting back to one more point that uh, comes out of discussion. This is very important in Pakistan because it affects only the poor. The elite does not seem to realize. That means the basic distribution of resources and governance would continue to... Any subject that we've been discussing here, at the end of the day, governance comes out. Kya hum resources, dams, build kar sakte the to reduce the effects of... Uh, kya iske baare mein kuch ho sakta tha? Yes, a lot of things could have been done to reduce, or if I am allowed to use the word mitigation or versus adaptation, a lot of mitigation in these areas could have been done with equal distribution of resources. When it comes to the point again, it's the, this population that is suffering every time throughout the year possibly is an important part of the national security. If they do not feel secure, the country cannot be secure by the elites alone. These people have to. So it has to be a, an overall people-centric approach to, to mitigate the effects or adaptation, as, as you say. I think people have to be brought into the loop. It has to be people-centric approach, which I, I think the positive side is, in the last few years, we have started talking about it. We have shifted our focus from hardcore security to human security. That's the positive side. So I think there's always something hap good happening here also. Not everything is bad. But it basically, in our country, as, as we have uh, the system now after 75 years, it is probably the responsibility of the state to mitigate, to make sure, don't wait for $32 billion that will come from somewhere. Problem, as Dr. Uh, Adil was saying, is there. What happens next year? So we have steps have we taken now, future, to secure these people, to make sure their houses are not destroyed. And on top of it, the schools are gone, hospitals are gone. So they don't have the basics. Uh, people sitting in Islamabad, do, you, do they realize what happens there? I, I don't know how much of realization is there. So, so once again, there has to be a debate and discussion and coming forward. Uh, uh, once again, Dr. Sir, thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for, uh, from uh, my side, from, on behalf of CAS, for all the audience uh, from various uh, corners of Islamabad. Thank you very much again. Thank you, sir. I would now request the President Cass, Air Marshal Farid, to present the Cass crest to our honorable speaker. With that, I thank you all for being a part of today's event. All right.